Good morning, friends. It is good to see you this morning, to be with you. I guess you're seeing me. I'm not seeing you. Um, good to see you if you are worshiping with us online. And hello if you join us later in the day or later in the week. Um, it is always good to gather for worship together. I want to start also by welcoming anybody who's with us for the first time. If you are joining us for the first time today, we're so glad that you have chosen to tune in. And we look forward to getting to know you better. I want to start by saying, wow, what a week. Uh, and not just a week, uh, a month, a year. I am exhausted. I don't know about you. Uh, we are in this unprecedented season. I know that word is overused, but it, but it really is true. This season has been unprecedented in its separation and division and fracture and anxiety and stress. With the pandemic, we've been physically separated from one another in ways that are just not, not good for our soul. Um, we have had this deep divide in our country because of ugly partisan politics. The horrifying reality of racism has come to the spotlight in heartbreaking ways. And incredibly harmful uh, violence has erupted. We have allowed differing understandings to pit us against one another. Many have been disrespectful and rude and antagonistic. And simple acts of common sense and decency have been politicized, causing us to demonize one another at worst or be judgmental at best. And so, what does it mean to be the church in these times? What does it look like to be church? What does it mean to be Trinity? And what does it look like to be Trinity? We, who we are and how we are known in this community, how will we be known in this community? All of that we, we, we look at today as we think about what it means to be the church. As we do that, we're going to look at a letter to another church in another community this letter was to the church in the city of Corinth, written around 50 A.D. Um, in what we call the letter to the Corinthians in the Bible, the letters to the Corinthians in the Bible. Corinth, at the time of this letter, was a leading city in Greece. It was toward the beginning of the Roman Empire, and it was a large religious and commercial hub, and in Corinth you could find a little bit of just about everything. The church at Corinth had the same. It was made up of Romans and Greeks, of Jews and Gentiles, of a few noble and many um, people who were not, of the powerful and the powerless, of men and women, of the wise and the simple. And apparently all of this uh, diversity was causing a good bit of conflict. Some were saying that they were better than others, and some were thinking they had the corner on the market on what was right or good or best. And this is what Paul says to them. So if you've got a Bible at home, I invite you to grab it and, and open it and read along with me or follow along with me on the screens. This is from the first letter to the Corinthians um, in the New Testament. You'll find Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, and then these two letters to the Corinthians. And I'm reading from chapter 12, uh, verses 4 through 13. Paul writes to them, Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, 
and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. We were all made to drink of the one spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we say thanks be to God. Let me invite you to bow your heads and pray with me. Uh, Pray for me in sharing the message with you today, and I'll pray for you that God will speak a, a word into all of our hearts and lives. Let's pray. Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So several years ago, when we were serving a church in another location, the church had children's time. Uh, Many churches have a children's time every week where the kids come forward. I think Trinity did that at some point as well. I think this particular Sunday that I'm thinking of was Pentecost Sunday, and I was sharing with the kids about church. Now, we were a new church start, and we were meeting in an elementary school cafeteria at the time, and so I really wanted to teach them, to share with them that the church was not the building, but it is the people. So I asked the kids to do this finger play with me. You guys are probably familiar with it. This is the church. This is the steeple. Open the doors and see all the people. They did that with me, and then I noticed that um, uh, Molly, a five-year-old, a very precocious five-year-old, was still over there wiggling her fingers, and then she piped up and said to me, Pastor Catherine, my people are fighting. (laughs) Now, that wasn't exactly what I was going for at just that moment, but, you know, that sometimes happened and happens and that was what was happening at the church in Corinth there was dissension and division some people were claiming they had the corner on the market because they had special gifts the best gifts those gifts that are mentioned here are special abilities and talents um, that each person is given so that they in a particular way um, have been gifted by the spirit for ministry. Everyone has a gift, a special gift given to them by the Spirit. Now that list in 1 Corinthians is not an exhaustive list, but it simply uh, gives examples of the ways that people in the church are gifted. Some with the gift of wisdom, some with the gift of knowledge, some with the gift of healing, some with the gift of faith. And some of those who spoke in tongues, and and particularly the speaking in tongues, some seemed to think that they were better than others. And you may remember that immediately after listing all of those gifts, Paul goes into the metaphor of the body, reminding them that they are all a part of one body, the body of Christ. You know, he, he says the The eye can't say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or the head to the foot, I have no need of you. One part can't say to another part that you aren't necessary, that you don't belong. And why? Well, Paul says there are two reasons for that. One, because all of the gifts, all that we are and all the ways that we offer ourselves are grounded in one triune God. Listen to what Paul says. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and varieties of services, ways to serve, but the same Lord Jesus Christ, and varieties of activities, but the same God who activates them in everyone. Did you catch that? It's the same God, the same Lord Jesus, the same Spirit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who is the common source of all of the unique ways in which we are gifted. And that common source calls us into one body, the church. In 2018, here in Trinity, after months of prayer and discernment, we embraced a new vision. It is who we are and who we are striving and continue to strive to be. That vision is to be a courageous, 
witness for Christ by welcoming all people, growing loving relationships, uh, nurturing deeper, deeper discipleship, and doing all the good we can in our community and beyond. In this part of the letter to the Corinthians, I hear Paul challenging the church to be the body of Christ by loving and caring for one another, growing loving relationships, and by being active in the world, serving others as we have been gifted, doing all the good we can. You know, frankly, I'm incredibly grateful to be serving alongside a congregation where loving relationships grow deep and how for so many those relationships prevail over differences of opinion and perspective. We have small groups and Sunday school classes. We have men's breakfast groups and, and, and women's bands and uh, life groups who have differences of perspective about everything from parenting to politics, from scriptural interpretation to stances on social issues. And yet, they have lived in community, some of them for many months, some of them for many years, with one another. They have been the body of Christ. No one of them will say to another, you don't belong here, or I'm better than you. That's what it looks like to be the church. That's what it looks like to be Trinity, to have diverse gifts and perspectives, diverse opinions and commitments, to see one another and listen to one another, to be in authentic, loving relationships with one another. It makes me think of Martin Buber's understanding of I-thou and I-it relationships. In the I-thou relationship, just as it sounds, we engage with one another in mutuality and, and reciprocity with respect and care and love. And Buber suggests that how we engage with one another can define reality. That kind of I-thou relationship describes loving and caring, authentic relationships. And those kinds of relationships and caring connections are grounded in only one source. One source by the power of the Holy Spirit as we embrace Jesus Christ as Lord and live that way. There's that's one significant way that we are courageous witnesses for Christ in our community. You know, yesterday the Gators played Georgia, and, and you know, most of us are Georgia fans around here. I mean, our Gator fans around here, but there are a couple of Georgia fans, two on our staff, Rebecca and Ward. And as you know, we love one another. We love one another. And at Trinity... We have people who are not just gators and bulldogs, but elephants and donkeys. People who are red and blue and green and black and white and brown. People who are old and young, who are powerful and powerless. We have wealthy and middle class and working poor. We have wise and simple, all loving one another and committed to being the body of Christ together. What will it mean to the greater community of Gainesville when word gets out that all those crazy people at Trinity, they all love each other, even though they think differently, even though they look different. That's what it's like to be the church. That's what it looks like to be Trinity. The second point that Paul makes is that we are the body of Christ because we all work together for the common good. Verse 7 says this, To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. That's because when Jesus is Lord of our lives, we are changed. We are transformed. We wake up every day and say, how can I serve you, Lord? How can I be your body? How can I be your hands and feet in the world? How can I be your love incarnate in the world? 
That's what the word manifestation means. To make known, to reveal who we are and how we are wired in Christ is meant to be revealed in how we live and serve in the world. We want to use our gifts for the common good in our workplaces and neighborhoods, in the grocery store and on the street corner, in the halls of our schools and in City Hall, in our community and beyond. You know, many people want to be a part of changing the world, <clears throat> making it a better place, a place that, that God created it to be, a place of love and unity where everyone has enough and no one lacks dignity or, or value. And we as Christians have the corner on that market because we are gifted by the Holy Spirit in amazing ways to, to transform the world and to change the world for the common good. John Wesley is the founder of the Methodist movement, and, and he's credited with uh, something that's often called the rule of life. He used variations of this quote in several places in his sermons. He said this, Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, at all the, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you ever can. To me, that sounds like a pretty good definition of working for the common good. What would it mean to look like that kind of church, to be that kind of church? I believe that's how Trinity is known in our community. I think I could walk around town and, and ask people about Trinity, and they might not know exactly where each of our campuses are, and they may not have seen the facilities or walked into the building. They may not know the details, but I think they would say that, oh yeah, Trinity's that church that does all the good they can, that by the power of the Holy Spirit works for the common good. If you ask them right now at the holidays, they would say, oh yeah, Trinity is that church that does the Thanksgiving baskets. I hear this year, even during a pandemic, they are doing Thanksgiving baskets for actually 1,400 people, households. Um, and each year, that church also delivers uh, 600 uh, Christmas gifts to the courthouse from their congregation to the courthouse, gifts of clothing and toys and other Christmas gifts for the children in the Ad Guardian Ad Litem program. And I could go on because the list is long. The key is to work together for the common good and to do so because Jesus Christ is the Lord of our lives and we cannot help but love others when Jesus is our Lord. What kind of vision do you have for Trinity to do all the good we can, to work for the common good? How might God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, use you and Trinity to be a courageous witness for Christ in our community to strive for the common good? You know, in, in 2001, just probably a day and a half after 9-11, I was watching the news. Now, as parents, we had chosen not to share with our kids about the events on 9-11. They were only four and eight, and we didn't want to frighten them or share all of that with them at once. But I was watching the news. I was sitting in our family room and watching the news. And, and as I was watching, they happened to be uh, showing photo after photo of people who had been lost in 9-11. And as they did that, Shelby, our eight-year-old daughter, walked into the room. And she said to me, Mommy, who are those people? And I said, oh, they're just, they're just people. And she paused for a moment, and then she looked at me, and she said, Mommy, are those the people who died when the planes hit those buildings? I said, yes, baby, they are. How, how did you know about that? 
And she said, well, some of the kids in my class were talking about it. I said, I'm sorry. It's so very sad. It's so very, very sad. Well, then that night, I was putting her to bed. Uh, I was sitting on the edge of her bed, and the room was dark, and we were about to say prayers together. And Shelby was quiet, and I could tell that her little brain was just swirling. And then she asked another question. She said, Mommy, did those people who flew the planes live here? And I said, yes, some of them did live here. We were in Sarasota, Bradenton, and, and some of the pilots had done training in Sarasota. And she had heard that as well. So I said, yes, that's true. And I didn't know whether she would be sad or mad or, or scared. And she was silent for a few moments again. And she said, Mommy, I wish they had come to our church. And I paused for a moment and I said, why, baby? And she said, well, if they had come to our church, then we could have changed them. I was glad it was dark because tears were streaming down my face. What faith, what amazing faith that little girl had that the church could change the world. You could call it audacious faith, or you could say that it was naive faith, the faith of a child. But then again, Jesus did say, let the children lead them, for to them belongs the kingdom of God. What does it mean to be the church? What does it look like to be the church? This is the church, this is the steeple. Open the doors and see all the people in this crazy world of ours. Let's get to work to be the body of Christ in the world. Let's be audacious, church, believing that we can stop terrorism, that we can end racism, that we can break down the walls of division in this country by our love and by the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives. Let's be a courageous witness for Christ with our loving relationships by doing all the good we can and by the power of the Holy Spirit and with Jesus Christ as Lord we can. Let's do work for the common good. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, help us as the people of Trinity to be a courageous witness for you. As we look toward the next year, help each of us let us pray this prayer. Help me to know what part you would have me to play in making this vision a reality. Help me to know how you would call me to embrace loving relationships. Help me to know what kind of sacrifice you would lead me to make to be a part of doing all the good we can in our community and beyond. In the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit in us, we pray. Amen.